Guys, I'm gonna, I want you to, you're gonna go through this four transaction and when I go through this four transaction, this is very, very interactive class whereby I will need you to participate. Yes, yes, definitely, um, Anari, the recordings, uh, the, yes, there will be recordings, yes, yes, thank you, uh, Catherine. Uh, and then Deboho, there has been a lot of system challenges where you keep getting errors when you attempt an assignment. And then when you submit your review comes out blank, I have failed my second assessment. I'm so worried. Yo, Deboho. Yo, that's so unfortunate. Hey, Deboho bullying. So in this exercise that we'll be doing at the present moment, um, so basically you are the bookkeeper of BS Electrical. So these are the transactions that are happening for the month of January for, for, for BS Electrical. So basically you are in the shoes as a bookkeeper, you need to record um, this transaction in the books of BS Electrical. So the first transaction is transaction one. So basically, Mr. Bingoli Sitole, a qualified electrician, started a small service business, BS Electrical, on the 1st of January 2021. He decided to deposit 40000 in an entity's bank account to start the business. So the question that I'm having is, what is the source document for this transaction? So remember, a source document will be uh, supporting documents that you will be using to record um, uh, the transaction. So for example, a source document will be a bank statement, will be a tax invoice, um, will be um, lease agreement. Um, so that's an example of a source document. So my question is, um, for transaction number one, Mr. Bingole Sitole, a qualified electrician who started a, a small service business, BS Electrical, on the 1st of January 2021, he decided to deposit 40000 in the entity's bank account to start a business. What is the source document uh, for this um, transaction? I see Prudence, Chanel is on the ball. Hey, guys, do you agree with uh, Chanel and Prudence? Do you agree with them? Just comment on the chat. Do you agree with, with the source document being the bank statement? And then why, why are you saying the bank statement? Why are you saying the bank statement? Prudence, Chanel, and then Offense agrees. Palesa, proof of payment uh, because he deposited money, Chanel, yes. And then uh, monies were deposited. Uh, into his business, uh, into his bank account, and will reflect on the bank statement. Guys, do you agree? Everybody else, do you agree with um, Chanel, Prudence, Offense, Palisa, um, Kirsten, and P Putiani? Do you agree with them? Because everybody's just saying yes, and um, the, the, the source documents is the bank statement. Well done, guys. Yes, that's correct. The bank statement is the source document. So you, as the bookkeeper, will be using um, the bank statement as your source document, as your source document to record the, the transaction one. So let's go to trans... Yes, guys, well done on this. Well done. So the transaction number two is on the 15th of January, 2021, BS Electrical bought a toolbox and tools to be used by Mr. B. Sitole on credit from big builders for 7,000. So what is the source document for transaction number two? What, what is the source document for transaction number two? On the 15th of January, BS Electrical bought toolbox um, to be used by B. Sitole on credit from big builders for 7,000 on credit. So this was bought on account. This was bought on credit. So remember this was bought on credit. So if for example, you take an account with, with um, Woolworths on account, what, 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 what will be your source document? 
So if, for example, on this one, you go to Woolworths and open an account, open an account at Woolworths, um, that you're going to take uh, food or clothing on credit, initially what you, you would have um, um, received from Woolworths for, for opening an account. So guys, I'm asking for uh, what is the source document? So transaction number two is the same as when you go um, to Woolworths and go open an account. So what will happen at that point when you open an account? So basically you're saying you're going to be taking food or clothing on credit. So what what is your source document there? I think it's Chris journal. Um, so to me, any invoice, um, creditor statement. Actually, I think it's a receipt, Chanel, original receipt, credit invoice. Uh, Kisten is saying statement, and then credit invoice, Leah, and invoice and Tabby saying. Guys, so basically you're saying now, when you go and open an account at Woolworths, um, and then at that point when you open an account, Woolworths, and then you bought um, uh, um, maybe food, definitely you will get a, a tax invoice. But when you open that um, account initially, what do you get? Um, what do you get when you initially? Um, Palisa is saying credit receipt. Steve is saying receipt. Um, credit statement, guys. So basically now when you go and open an account, you get credit account that qualifies you to take clothes. Yes. So basically there must be an agreement that was signed between BS Electrical and um, um, the supplier. So definitely there should be, because you are now saying, I'm agreeing to be paying this in the next three years. So basically there's an agreement to say, um, sign this, you're gonna be paying this the next three years. We're gonna debit your account with maybe 800 rand. Um, uh, because they're, they're not buying this by cash. So there must be an agreement that was signed uh, between um, a BS Electrical and Big Builders. Um, you get credit. So there must be an agreement and also at, uh, on a 15 board toolbox. So there must be an agreement and a tax invoice um, for that. Um, uh, 7,000. So there must be a credit agreement that you entered into between you and uh, big builders um, that you will be paying this amount, uh, let's say, for example, for the next two years, for the, for the next 24 months or 36 months, and there'll be, a, uh, or maybe you agreeing to say you will pay every month, you know, uh, um, uh, according to the credit agreement that you entered into. So there should be a credit uh, agreement, there should be a tax invoice for for, for transaction number, um, number two. So let's look at transaction number three. Transaction number three, on the 18th of January, BS Electrical bought a letter from Letters and paid for it by EFT for 1,200. So what is the sales document for transaction number three? So uh, transaction number three is on the 18th of January, uh, BS Electrical bought a letter from Letters and paid it by EFT for 1,200. So what is the source document for that? Uh, Somebody is saying a receipt, a receipt, a receipt, original cash purchase invoice. Guys, do you agree? Do you agree with the answers? A receipt, bank statement, yes, bank statement. 
bank statement can be an invoice if it's if it's purchased. On the 8th, and let me just read, on the 18th of January, BS Electrical bought a letter from Letters PTY and paid it by EFT. Yes, yes. Can see proof of payment from the bank. Okay, do you agree with the answers, guys? Do you agree with the answers? If it's paid, EFT recorded receipts, Daniele received Dumsani, uh, proof of prudence, proof of payment. Bushe can be an invoice if it's purchased. Bank statement, uh, Puchani, Chanel is saying original cash, purchase invoice. Um, proof of payment, bank statement, notice of payment, yes. Guys, um, so for the for most of you are correct. So basically, because you paid by EFT, your source document will be tax invoice from from letters PTY and a bank statement. Yes, so it will be a tax invoice and also EFT um, um, and also bank statement. So bank statement and text invoice from letters P2 LTD. So the fourth transaction is on the 25th of January, BS Electrical paid salary to M. Macau Junior Electrician by EFT for 4,000. So what is the source document for transaction number four? Payslip and bank statement. Payslip. Pay, uh, bank statement. Pay slip and bank statement, pay slip. Uh, bank statement, pay slip and bank statement. Um, yo, I'm so impressed, guys. Eh? I'm very, very impressed. I am very, very impressed. I am very, very impressed. I agree with everybody, Prudence. Yes, guys, you correct. Pay slip and bank statement pay slip and bank statement you are correct so basically we just covered the what source documents will you as a bookkeeper will be using to record this transaction so basically in a practical scenario you won't be seeing these transactions you will be looking at the source document in recording these transactions. So for the course purposes, they are writing this um, uh, transactions, but in a practical um, a scenario whereby you're the bookkeeper of BS Electrical, you will be having those source document to record this transactions. Um, uh, I hope I hope you understand that that in a practical scenario as a bookkeeper, you will be holding the source documents for you to record the transactions. So, guys, after this, uh, we've done the source document. The four transaction that you're looking at, I want us to now with using the same four transactions, I want us to apply the double entry principle. I want us to apply the double entry principle. So what does the, the, the um, how do you apply the double entry principle? We need to use this four transactions to apply the double entry principle. So what is the double entry principle saying? So this is what we're going to be. So we're going to be using this four points to apply the double entry principle. So using those four transaction, I'll be asking you those four questions and you need to answer me uh, yes, yes, bank statement, credit agreement, etc. So, so at the present moment, um, 
we're going to be doing the applying the double. Yes, yes. For yes, for every debit, there must be and uh, there should be an ent a credit entry. So at the moment, I want us to apply that using those four points. I want us to apply the double uh, entry principle. So basically, the first transaction is which two accounts uh, are involved in the transaction. Number two, do the accounts form part of asset equity or liability? Number three, did the asset equity or liability increase or decrease? Number four, which one of the accounts must be debited and which one of the accounts must be credited in the general ledger and the trial balance? So basically, I want us to apply these four uh, points uh, when applying the double entry principle. So in applying the double entry principles, I want us to answer those four questions uh, using those four transactions. So I'm going to go back and show you the, the, the exercise. Uh, Chanel is saying uh, bank account increase, so therefore it must be debited. Capital account equity increases and must be credited. Offense, it means that for every debit, there should be a credit entry for the same amount. Yes, Kahi, so that's correct. So I'm going to share, but I'm going to share the same exercise, but on that same exercise, I want us to apply these four points on the, on, on the um, uh, transaction. So basically, we are applying the double entry principle, but applying those four questions. Um, so I'm going to share the, the, the exercise. So the first, um, the first, so I've shared transaction number one, but I'm going to write the, the one of the first uh, question on the double entry principle on the cheat. So in, uh, transaction one is saying, B uh, Bongoli, um, a qualified electrician started a small service business on the 1st of January. He decided to deposit 40,000 in the entity bank account to start a business. So my question I'm going to write in applying the double entry principle is which two accounts are involved in the transaction? Which two accounts are involved in the transaction the transaction so i see that chanel has also answered she she said bank and capital prudence bank and capital leah bank and capital uh, ABC Po Bank and Capital. Okay, guys, do you agree with them? Do you agree? Bank and Capital, yes. Palisa agrees. Um, Pelisi Way, AB, uh, Fundi Swayo agrees. Palisa, Steve agrees. Tabi Singh agrees. Uh, Masango agrees. Jonathan agrees. Um, okay, Jonathan agrees. Um, Putiani agrees. Well done, guys. That is true. So the two accounts um, in this exercise are bank and capital. That is true. The second point on applying the double entry principle is do the accounts form part of asset equity liabilities? The second point is do the accounts form part of, so those two accounts that you mentioned in point number one, do they form part of asset liability or equity? 
So basically, guys, I see that yes, bank. So those those two accounts, because you said capital and bank. So what is what what what? So um. So the first point you said capital and bank. So the next point ask you: Do the accounts form part of asset equity or liability? That is the second question. And then I can see the answer, not sure of liabilities, but assets and equity, yes. Prudence, equity and asset. Um, Prudence, uh, Leah, asset and equity. And then um, Chanel, bank is an asset, capital is equity, okay. Uh, Felicia, yes, bank, asset, capital, equity. And then Jonathan, debit, bank, credit, capital. Um, Nyeleti, asset and equity. Uh, Deboho, uh, Deboho saying, asset and equity. Yes, guys, well done. Capital forms part of equity. Bank forms part of an asset. Well done on the say. Well done. So the third point is asking, what is the third point? The third point is, is asking, did the asset equity or liability increase or decrease? That is the, the third point in applying the double entry principle. Both asset and equity increase, okay. Both asset and equity increase, okay. Both asset and equity increases. Oh, both, both sides. Oh, both increase, Jonathan. A, B increase on both, both increase because of double entry principle. Guys, both increase. The capital with uh, equity increases on the credit side. So when when um, equity increases, you credit the account. Um, so bank money came into the business. Money came uh, into the business. So there's more money coming into the the, the 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 businesses bank account so bank is an asset an asset increases on the debit side and when an asset increase you you debit it so asset increase and equity increase yes guys well done the fourth point is which one of the account must be debited which one of the account must be credited in the general ledger and trial balance so the so the fourth point is saying which one of the account must be debited and which one account must be credited in the general ledger and the trial balance. I think most of you are saying Prudence is saying bank debited capital credited in the general ledger and trial balance. Prudence, are you saying that bank will be debited and capital will be credited in the general ledger and the trial balance? And then Chanel is saying bank account increases on the debit side and capital account increases on the credit side, okay? Jonathan is saying bank must be debited and capital must be credited. Uh, Fundiswa, asset debit, capital credit. Uh, Leah is saying bank debit, capital credit. Bank must be debited, capital credited. Uh, bank must be debited, capital credited. And then Cajiso, well, I also think capital is also, oh, uh, let's see, Cajiso, well, Cajiso is saying, let me see it, Cajiso, well, I also think capital is also debited. So Cajiso, why do you think capital must be uh, debited? Cajiso is saying capital is also debited. Why is is um, capital debited, Cajiso? Uh, let's see. So Cajiso is saying. So Cajiso is saying. Capital is never debited. 
Kajiso, oh, so, okay, no, all right. So Kajiso made a mistake. She, uh, Kajiso was saying it should be credited, okay. So everybody is in agreement that um, bank and asset will be debited and capital equity will be credited. So everybody is in agreement with that. So which is definitely correct. So let's apply the same rule on transaction number two. Transaction number one, guys, well done, eh? Well done on transaction number one. Everybody is, 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 is understanding the double entry principle. Well done on transaction number one. So let's look at transaction number two. Let's apply the double entry um, rule on transaction number two. So remember the question is, which two accounts are involved in the transaction? So we're looking at uh, transaction number two now. Which two accounts um, are involved? So everybody got 100% for transaction number one. Let's look at transaction number two. What are the two accounts? What are the two accounts um, involved there? Bank and tools, I think, okay. Bank, asset and liability, okay. What, what, are the, what are the two accounts? What are the two accounts? What are the two accounts there? Um, offense, um, offense is saying, um, let's see. What are the two accounts there? The two accounts, Prudence is saying bank, and tools and equipment, I think. Um, and then um, AB, tools and equipment and bank, asset and liability, Jonathan, Pumzile, asset and bank. Jonathan is saying asset, um, Jonathan, Jonathan is saying asset, which is equipment and liability. And then Chanel is saying tools, uh, tools and equipment and accounts payable. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Iho Puleng is saying tools and equipment and bank. Let, let me see the question. So the question is on, uh, on transaction number two, I'm asking you, um what are they so we're applying the double entry uh principle on transaction number two so the double entry uh, principle is asking so you you always ask yourself this four question let me share this four questions again i'm gonna share the questions that i'm asking at the moment so in applying the double entry rule so i'm asking you this four questions on transaction um, number two. So in applying the double entry principle, I want you to always ask yourself these four questions. Which two accounts are involved? Do the accounts form part of asset equity or liability? Did the asset equity or liability increase or decrease? Which one of the accounts must be debited or which one must be credited in the general ledger? in the general ledger and the trial balance. So basically now I'm asking the first question, which two accounts are involved? Which two accounts are involved in this, in transaction number two, which is this? So the question is, which two accounts um, are involved in transaction number two? So I see equipment and trade payable. So the comments I see, let's see, tools and equipment, asset and liability. Equipment is an asset, credit is a liability, Sylvia. Um, which, which is equipment and liability tools. So guys, do we all agree that, um, the two accounts are what? What are the two accounts? What are the two accounts? 
BS Electrical Board Tools Box, Toolbox and Tools, and used uh, to be used by BC Tolle on credit. So this was bought on credit from big builders. So the answer is what? Is an asset toolbox is forms part of tools and equipment, which is an asset. So the answer is uh, um, uh, the answer is tool. Yes, toolbox um, is an asset, and also because um, this was bought on account, um, this is a creditor. This is a trade payable. This is a liability. This is a, a, a creditor. So it's it's um, tools and equipment and uh, trade payables. Yes, trade payables and equipment. Yes, yes. So the second question in applying the double entry rule is: Do the account form part of asset, equity, or liability? So somebody saying asset and liability. Asset and liability, 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 asset and liability. And what is the asset? What is the liability? Yes, yes. Guys, we're all in agreement. This is an asset, which is the toolbox and also the creditor, uh, which is, uh, yes, you agree with them. And the creditor, which is uh, big builders, it's a liability. So the third point, uh, I'm agreement with all of you guys. The third point is, did the asset equity or liability increase or decrease? That is the third point. The third point is, did the asset equity liability increase or decrease? Equipment asset. Both, somebody said both increase. Asset increase, liability increase. Both increase. Asset increase, both increase. Both increase. Both increase. Both increase. Yo, well done, guys. Well done. Yes, yes. Asset. Um, there's more asset now for BSC Electrical. So BSC Electrical has acquired an asset. So that will increase their asset in the business. So that's why asset is increasing. Liability. They just um, uh, um, got. A, a new liability into the company. So this increases their, their liability for BS Electrical. So the fourth point is, which one of these accounts must be debited? Which one must be credited in the general ledger and the trial balance? Which one of the account must be debited? Which one of account must be credited in the general ledger and the trial balance? Liability must be credited, asset debited, Liability must be credited. Tools and equipment debited. Trade payables increases. Debit and liability. Tools and equipment debited. Trade payables increases. Um, let me see. Um, let's see. Liabil asset, debit, liability, credit. So debit, tools and equipment and credit. So guys, do you agree with me that the, 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 um, the two accounts here that are involved in this transaction is um, tools and equipment and trade payables. So basically, tools and equipment is an asset so asset will be debited in the general ledger and also will be debited in the trial balance. Number two, um, the other one is creditor. It's a trade payable. Big builders is a creditor. It will be credited in the general ledger and it will also be credited in the trial balance.
balance. So most, yeah, everybody. This one confused me, but I think assets must be debited and liabilities credited. Yes, yes, and be saying. So basically, um, whatever you're going to debit or credit in the general ledger, you will be doing the same thing in the trial balance. So remember the accounting cycle. I want you to give you this just overview. The accounting cycle is source document. After source document, you process this in the subsidiary journals. After the subsidiary journals, general ledger. After general ledger, you record this in the trial balance. So this is sort of like the sequence of how you're going to record your transaction. So the first thing is the source document. You've got the bank statement. The bank statement is saying, um, uh, first of all, the bank statement is saying, um, Mr. Bingoli has deposited uh, 40,000. So on the bank statement, you see a 40,000. And then the next step is you're going to record this in your cash receipts journal. And then in your cash receipts journal, you're going to debit bank and credit capital. The next step, you're going to do your general ledger. After you do you do your, your, your general ledger, you're going to have individual accounts. Uh, account capital, you're going to be credit with uh, 40,000 and you're going to have a account bank debit with 40,000. Then the next step is the trial balance. On the trial balance, you're going to debit bank 40,000 and credit um, your capital with 40,000. Um, let me just ask this. So Cajiso is saying um, source documents, subsidiary journals, general ledger and trial balance. So basically, Kahiso, I'm telling you an overview of the, 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 the accounting process. So basically, when you do your um, transactions, this is the sequence you'll be doing this. Source documents, the first transaction. Let's look at the first transaction. So this is sort of like the accounting cycle. Source document, you're going to start with a source document, which is that bank statement. The next step is subsidiary journal. What is a subsidiary journal? Subsidiary journal is all your cash book receipts, cash book payments, um, general uh, journal. That is your subsidiary journal. The next one is your general ledger. General ledger is where you record all your individual account and just to see what is the balance at the end of that month. Then comes the trial balance. The trial balance is summarizing all your balances for that month. It summarizes all the individual uh, accounts um, on a monthly basis. So basically in an example for transaction number one, if you will, we wanna do the, the the accounting cycle. First of all, what is you'll be holding as a bookkeeper or an accountant of BS Electrical. You'll be having a bank statement. On that bank statement, you see that money came in, um, 40,000. The reference is capital contribution on that bank statement. You holding that bank statement, what is your next step as a bookkeeper accountant of BS Electrical? Your next step is recording this because on a monthly basis, as an accountant or bookkeeper, you need to do a bank reconciliation. So when you do anything that goes through your bank, you need to do a bank reconciliation on a monthly basis. The next step now, after having that bank statement, is recording this in your subsidiary journal. So you're going to be recording this. So now, guys, please note, we're looking at transaction one. I'm applying transaction one. All uh, I'm applying the accounting cycle, which is source documents, subsidiary journal, a general ledger, and the next step, the last step will be the trial balance. So when now on transaction one, you're holding the bank statement because you do you need to do on a monthly basis as an accountant or bookkeeper, you need to do a bank reconciliation. So at that point, you're holding your bank statement uh, for the month of Jan. You see, you're looking at the bank statement. There's money that came in for 40000 on the 1st of January. And the reference on that bank statement is saying capital contribution uh, by um, uh, being all to told. You look at that bank statement. The question is, where am I going to record this? You're going to record it on what? Cash book receipt. 
So what's going to happen is, so basically now because different companies use different accounting system. So others use Pastel, use QuickBooks, use Agpack, use SAP, use Meconomy. So you're going to be recording this on your accounting system. So now you're doing a bank recon because this is a bank statement that you're holding. Now the first step, your source document, your bank statement, you're looking at that bank statement. It's saying um, capital contribution. You, you're recording this on your accounting software in your cash book receipt. You're going to what? You're going to debit what? Bank 40,000, credit your capital with 40,000. That is your second um, uh, point for your accounting cycle. Your third uh, step, because this is a system generated, this is going to generate this to your general ledger. So your general ledger, your account, individual account, bank is going to be debited with 40,000 and your individual account capital is going to be um, credited with 40,000. Then the next step, because it's going to be your trial balance. This is going to pull through your trial balance. Your bank is going to be debited with 40,000 and um, credited with um, capital of 40,000. So basically, I'm just telling you on that one transaction, this is how the accounting cycle is going to flow. So I so I, I, I hope you understand what I, I just told you now is first step source document. Second step, subsidiary journal. What is the subsidiary journal for transaction number one? Cash book receipts. Number three, this because we're not manually doing this using writing it down. It's system generated. So after recording this on your cash book receipts, the system already when you generate a general ledger, you're going to see that, oh, account bank is debited 40,000 account uh, capital is created 40,000. And then for the month of Jan, when also you generate a, a, a trial balance, you're going to see that your trial balance is debited with um, uh, is um, the, the your trial balance is debited with 40,000 bank credited with capital um, uh, 40,000 for, for that month of uh, January. So I see Junior. Hello, I have a problem with network connection. Can I have uh, recordings after the session? Um, Junior, UNISA will post this recording, say, eh? but I don't think it will be today. But UNISA will well record, well um, um, give the recordings to the students. But I don't promise that you'll be getting um, Junior the recording today. Um, Prudence, guys, I want to explain this uh, cycle, the flow of how uh, things are, are, are done practically. So I'm going to repeat that. Thank you uh, for the explanation, Prudence, I see. So the flow of this is on transaction number one. I'm going to repeat that. Transaction number one is a source document, bank statement. I'm holding a bank statement. Uh, so every bookkeeper accountant on a monthly basis, they need to do a bank reconciliation. So when you do your bank recon, you're going to be recording this transaction number one, the, the 40,000, you're going to be debiting you, this on your cash book receipt. Debit bank 40,000, credit um, uh, capital 40,000. The next step the system is going to be in your general ledger. Your general ledger is going to be debited with bank 40,000 and capital is going to be credited with 40,000. The next step, your trial balance, your trial balance will be um, debited with 40,000 bank credited capital with 40,000. That is the, 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 what you call the accounting cycle. And that is how everything starts. Starts with your recording will always start with source document. You will start with the source document. Guys, let's continue with transaction number three. Transaction number three, um, I want us to, to do the double entry on transaction number three. I want to know what is the two accounts for for transaction number three. So which is uh, which is on the 18th of January, BS Electrical bought a letter from Letters and paid 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 for it by EFT 1200. So everybody's saying bank and equipment. Everybody's saying. Um, uh, 
everybody saying bank, uh, bank, bank and equipment. Uh, let me just see. Somebody's asking a question. Let me see your question. Uh, I think, uh, let's see. Somebody's asking a question. Where's that question? What are, what are the two accounts? But I saw somebody asking bank and equipment. Uh, I think. Uh, So everybody is saying, so Junior, Junior is asking which book you using. So Junior, Junior, in this transaction, transaction number three, um, what subsidiary journal will be using for transaction number three? Number three will be using cash book payment. Remember this was paid by EFT. We'll be using cash book payment for this transaction. The subsidiary journal will be cash book payment, uh, Junior. Kahi, so this is not a cash receipts. Uh, cash receipts is the first transaction, but this one we're doing will be because this was paid by EFT. So this will be cash book payment. So the two, we, we do agree, uh, uh, guys, that the, because this was bought by EFT, this is um, um, because this was bought by EFT. This is tools and equipment and bank. I that is definitely correct, guys. This is um, tool, tools, equipment and bank. And then Kahiso, do you understand why it's, it's not cash receipts? Oh, it's cash receipts and bank. No, it's tools and equipment and bank because this was paid by EFT. Tools and equipment was bought um, and paid by EFT. So um, the next question that I'm going to ask is, um, uh, do the accounts form part of asset equity or liability? Bank, uh, uh, do the, do, the accounts form part of asset equity and liability. So um, Chanel is saying bank uh, asset and then uh, equipment asset, okay? Leah is saying asset and equity. Balisa is saying bank and... both assets, both assets. Leah is saying asset and equity. Asset and equity, both assets, both assets. And Tabi saying, saying um, asset and equity. So I'm gonna ask, um, I'm gonna ask, um, um, I'm gonna ask Leah and Tabi saying, why are they saying, and also Pumzile, why are you saying asset and equity? Why are you saying asset and equity? Um, I see that um, Leah is saying asset and equity. Um, I'm seeing Tabi saying is saying asset and equity. Pumzi le asset and equity. Guys, why are you saying asset and equity? Why are you saying asset and equity? So the answer is bank is an asset. When I visualize it, let's see. Leah, uh, banking, when I visualize it, must balance an accounting equation. Um, and it would increase in both equipment. Okay, so guys, both are assets. Let me explain why they're both assets. So number one, bank is an asset and tools and equipment is an asset. So bank is decreasing, bank money is outgoing, money is out of the bank account, and asset to uh, the ladder. The ladder is increasing assets in the business. So I'm going to say that again. Both the two accounts is, uh, they, they are both assets. 
so a letter, so a letter is 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 um, uh, a letter is an asset. A letter is an asset, and bank is an asset. So I hope that Leah and um, Leah Pumzile, Balisa, uh, is it Leah Pumzile and? Those who said equity is not equity. So the only thing that will affect equity is income, is expenses, is capital, is drawings. That's the only thing that will affect equity. So the one thing, please, I'm going to say something that I need you to write it down because we're going to be doing an, the accounting equation. Income will always increase equity. Expense will always decrease equity. So please write it down, make a note of it when we do the accounting equation. Income will always increase owner's equity. Expenses will always decrease owner's equity. Please make a note of that when we do the accounting equation. Please, please write it down some way. We're going to, after doing this um, um, double entry principle, we're going to be applying the same transaction doing the accounting equation. So I just want you, I'm going to repeat that. Guys, please write it down. When you do the accounting equation, when you do the accounting equation, income will always increase owner's equity. Expenses will always decrease owner's equity. Write it down. I'm going to repeat that. Please, guys, when we do, we're going to be, after this, we're going to be doing the accounting equation. Please make a note of this. When you do the accounting equation, income will always increase owners, will always increase equity, and expenses will always decrease equity when you do um, accounting equation. So, the same transaction we'll be doing, we'll be doing the accounting equation. So I need you to make a note of that, what I just said now. Please write it some way, make a note of it. Make a note of it. So the last one on this, I want to say the last point of the double entry principle is which one of the accounts must be debited, which one of the accounts must be credited in the general ledger and the trial balance. Which one? must be debited, which one must be credited in the general ledger and the trial balance. So bank credit, bank credit. Uh, Chanel is saying uh, bank credit toolbox debit. Okay, Le Leah, Leah is saying um, Leah is saying Oh, debit, bank credit, tool and equipment, debit. No, no, Leah is saying bank credit, tool and equipment, debit. Prudence is saying bank is credited, toolbox and equipment, debited. And then Fundiso is saying bank. So basically, guys, what are we saying? Well done on all you guys. Uh, uh, Somebody is saying both debited. Uh, so remember the double entry rule. You can't debit, uh, there can't be two debits, double entry rule, AB. Remember the double entry rule. For every debit, there must be a credit of the same amount. Can be both debited, eh? So guys, we agree that we're gonna debit toolbox and equipment with, we're gonna debit toolbox and equipment um toolbox and equipment are gonna be debited you're gonna be debiting it with 1200 in the general ledger and the trial balance and we're gonna be crediting bank with 1200 on the general ledger and the trial balance we agree with that so well done on the third transaction the fourth one is on the 25th of January, BS Electrical paid salary to M. Macau jun uh, Junior Electrician by EFT 4000. What are the source documents for transaction number four?
transaction number four, we we are applying, um, I made a mistake there, we are applying the double entry rule. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Chanel, on that. We, we are applying the double entry principle, the source document we did mention, uh, that is bank statement payslip. Um, I just want to know um, what are the two accounts, what are the two accounts involved there? What are the two accounts there? Yes, people are saying yes, bank and wages. What are the uh, two accounts there? What are the two accounts? Yes, bank and salaries. So wages is a weekly basis, salaries is on a monthly basis. So wages, Leah is paid on a weekly basis and salaries are paid on a monthly basis. So in this example, we're going to take it that that is um, the salary, that he got a salary. Yes, guys, yes, yes. The two accounts is definitely bank and um, the two accounts is, is basically bank and salaries. Do the accounts form part of asset equity and liabilities? Do the accounts form part of asset equity and liabilities? Bank is an asset and salary is equity. Um, that is Chanel. Chanel is saying bank is asset. And then Chanel is saying bank is asset, salary is equity. And then Nelet is saying asset and liability. Okay. And then Kahiso is saying bank asset salary equity. Okay. And then let's see. Asset and equity, salaries is equity. Guys, yes, bank is an asset. Salary, yes, from part of salary is an expense and expense from part of equity. Yes. Yes. Let me answer. I've got a question from Prudence. The, the company pays both salary and weekly wages. Would salary and wages be a current asset? Is any asset which can reasonably be expected to be sold, consumed, exhausted through the normal operation of the business within the current operating cycle and financial year? So basically, salaries, wages are all expenses. They are all expenses. They don't, they not asset. They're not assets. So salaries, uh, wages are expenses of the company. Uh, Prudence, I hope that answers your question. So that isn't an asset. So that is um, uh, uh, an expense. Um, uh, 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 salaries and wages are expenses. Uh, so the question is, I mean, would you have separate accounts? No, no, normally, companies don't have separate accounts. It's salaries and wages. So they would put it in one account called salaries and wages. So it will be just a one account uh, saying salaries and wages. Uh, okay, let's see. So basically, we said um, uh, did the asset, let's just see where we are. Yes, bank is an asset salary from part of equity. Um, so let's look at the last one is which one of the account must be debited and which one of account must be credited in the general ledger and the trial balance? Which one must be debited? Which one must be credited in the general ledger and the trial balance? So credit bank and debit salary. Credit bank and debit salary. Yes. So Chanel, credit. Joseph. Uh, bank credited debit salary. Yes, guys. And then Joseph saying credit bank account. Yes. Bank credit salaries debit. Um, bank credit debit salaries. Yes, guys. Yes, so basically now this you just guys applied the the double the double entry system is correct. 
credit bank debit credit bank debit expense which is salaries in the um, in the trial balance and the general ledger so uh, that is correct so this is um, remember when you do the trial balance your trial balance must always balance so i just shared with you the trial balance um, of bs electrical can you see it guys so basically what we just did now ne? what we just did now is we did source document um up until trial balance so when i say to you the last step is which account do you debit which account to be credit i'm saying you want to debit this account in the general ledger and credit uh, debit this account in the general ledger and also debit it in the trial balance so for example remember when i i showed you the transaction number one where the owner contributed forty thousand to the business i said to you the first step is you're going to record this you're going to do a bank reconciliation because that amount came came into the bank account the first step is your source documents is a bank statement the second one recording where are you going to record this cash book receipt you're gonna debit bank credit capital the next step is you're gonna record the individual account in the general ledger so so in the general ledger this individual account is going to be debit uh, bank debit credit capital with um 40 000. and then the last step is trial balance you're going to be recording all those balances in the trial balance do you understand what i'm saying do you understand why the bank account is 34,800? do you understand why tools and equipment is 8200 this was summed up in the general ledger remember general ledger is taking everything that happened for that account for that month summing summering it up to get a balance for that month so basically the bank account what happened there is money came in for forty thousand, but we pay, we bought what we bought um a later for 1.2 and then we paid salaries for four uh, four thousand rand so the balance on the general ledger so remember the general ledger there's a balance you need to balance your accounts so the balance brought down will be 34,800 debit. That will also, you'll be taking this to the trial balance. What happened to tools and equipment? Tools and equipment, you bought a letter for 1.2 EFT and you bought um, tools and equipment for 7,000 on credit. So both adding up to 8,200. So this will be, you'll, this will be a balance that you'll be getting from the general ledger you'll be getting this 8200 from the general ledger so general ledger is just a summary of summing up an individual accounts what happened what transaction happened on that account for that month so i was asking uh, there's a question i was answering um i don't know if it was in tabi saying so i was answering a question regarding you say general ledger is a daily, um, uh, it's a daily uh, recording. So I'm saying is it pulls through. So any transaction that you record on a daily basis, it will pull through the general ledger and the trial balance. It will pull through the, the, the general ledger and the trial balance. So guys let me share i used to let me share the the tb we were looking at the trial balance now can you see the trial balance so guys the trial balance must always balance so it must always balance your trial balance so can you see that this is balancing so guys do you understand how i got to this trial balance do you understand how i got to this step of the trial balance we have got the 40,000, the 34,800, um, the 7,000. Do you, do, can you see, do you know where I got the balances? Okay, no, that's good. 
So now, guys, I want us to do. OK, I see you guys. You say you understand. I want us to do the accounting equation. I want to go through with you the accounting equation. I want us to look at the accounting equation. So the accounting equation, it says that assets equals to equity plus liabilities. So this is the equation that, that um, when they talk about accounting equation, it states that assets equals to equity plus liabilities. Or you can say that equity equals to assets minus liabilities. So the equity equals equals all the assets in the entity less all the claims against those assets, uh, which is the liabilities. So number, I'm going to be going through the accounting equation with you using these transactions. So now, uh, Ms. Debingol, as you told a qualified electrician, stated that a small service business be as electro, elect, electrical on the 1st of Jan, he decided to deposit 40,000 in the entity's bank account to start the business. So can you see that I want to go through this equation with you. Assets equals to equity plus liability. So can you see that I'm saying plus 40,000 equals to plus 40,000. So bank is an asset asset in, increase. When an asset increase, you debit. So I said a plus 40,000 equals to a plus 40,000 and liability, there's nothing is zero, plus zero. So can you see that my equation balances? So 40,000 equals to 40,000 plus zero. So it's 40, 000, plus 40,000 equals to plus 40,000. Can you see that transaction one, my accounting equation balances? Can you see that, guys? Can you see that the the... the the accounting equation here balances uh, for transaction number one. So any issues with transaction accounting equation at uh, transaction number one? Do you have any issues with that? Do you have any issues with transact with with uh, number one? Okay, let's do transaction number two. Transaction number two is um, um, they bought toolbox uh, used by BC Tolle on credit from big builders. So. Number one, tool, remember toolbox is an asset. An asset is increasing. And when you, your asset is increasing, you debit it. So it's plus tools and equipment 7,000 equals to, because there's nothing in equity is zero, plus zero equity, plus uh, uh, creditor 7,000. So we um, I'm putting a plus because tools and equipment is increasing, is an asset, is increasing. I'm putting a plus for creditor because creditor is a liability and a liability is what is increasing. I'm putting a plus 7,000. Can you see that my transaction balances plus 7,000 equals to plus zero plus 7,000, the side. Can you see that my transaction balances? So any issues with transaction number two? Can you see that my transaction balances? And can you see that once you understand your double entry principle, I don't think the accounting equation will be a big issue. Can you see that understanding the double entry uh, rule principle, you're able to apply it also on your accounting equation? Can you see that tools and equipment is an asset and an asset is increasing plus 7,000? When you look here, on this transaction, there's no equity. That's why this is zero. Then you go, there's a, um, a, a liability big builders for 7,000, so plus 7,000. So our uh, uh, um, equation balances plus 7,000 equals to plus 7,000. So any issues on transaction number two? So we're going to be doing transaction number three. Transaction number. OK, no issues. Transaction number three, they bought a, a, a letter. Look at the, the, the equation. These are both assets. 
Can you see? They are under assets. These are both assets. They are under assets. So bank is a minus because it's decreasing. Tools and equipment is a plus because it's increasing. We've bought an asset into the business. Bank is decreasing because money is going out of the bank account. So it's a minus 1,002 plus 1,002, which is zero, equals to zero plus zero. Can you see that this transaction also three is balancing? Can you see that this transaction is balancing? So it's a plus, it's a minus 1,200, it's a minus 1,200, it's a plus uh, 1,200. There's a zero effect here on the both the, the, the amounts. Then equals to plus zero equal equity plus uh, zero liability. But can you see that the transaction balance? Can you see that the transaction balance, guys? Can you see that it balances? Let's go to transaction number four. Let's go to transaction number four. Transaction number four, salaries was paid. Guys, um, let's go to transaction number four. Uh, so somebody, before we go to transaction four, I see a question. So does it matter which is put first on transaction number three? It doesn't matter. You can put um, um, tools and equipment as a plus and put bank at the bottom, but so long as both are under that asset and they are put with the correct signs, that you put a minus on bank and a plus on um, um, and a plus on um, tools and equipment. So it doesn't matter. You can start by putting tools and equipment on top with a plus 1,200 and put bank at the bottom with a minus bank with a minus and uh, 1,200. It doesn't matter. But so long as this, there's a minus bank and there's a plus for tools and equipment, doesn't matter. Uh, which one you start with doesn't matter so i'm gonna do transaction number four transaction number four guys please read out what i said you need to make note of there's something i said to you make note of that there is something that i said you need to make note of that when because i told you we're going to be doing the accounting equation i said make note of that just mention to me what I said to you earlier on. Well done. Yes, guys, you're listening. I'm impressed. <laughs> you are listening. I am so impressed. You listen, guys. You listen. Chanel, very attentive. I'm impressed. Chanel, income always increases equity expense. Yes, guys. Yes. So we're going to be applying that on this transit. Well done, guys. You are listening. Well done. So look. So 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 look at um, uh, transaction number number four. Can you see what I was talking about? Bank money came out of the the, the account. Bank is decreasing. Can you see? Bank is decreasing the minus. Then salaries is an expense. An expense will always always increase, decrease owners, a uh, decrease equity. So can you see the, now that the, our equation balances? Asset, bank, minus 4,000. Equity, uh, salaries, minus 4,000. Can you see that our, our equation balances? Can you see that our equation balances? So it's uh, asset, minus 4,000. Equity is plus, uh, a minus 4,000 and plus zero, our equation balances. Can you see, guys? Can you see that our equation balances? Can you see that our, our, our equation, our equation balances? So now I'm going to be asking you Transaction number five. Let's do transaction number five. Transaction number five. 
On the 26th of January 2021, BS Electrical rendered a service to M. Sakhadi and she paid 7,500 for the electrical uh, repairs. What is the source documents there? Transaction number five. What is the source documents? So on the 26th of January, BS Electrical rendered a service to M. Sakhadi and she paid 7,500 for the electrical repairs by EFT. What is the source document? I see tax invoice, bank notice, bank statement and invoice. Bank statement and invoice. Um, I see Leah tax invoice, bank notice of payment, prudence, proof of payment and receipt, Chanel, bank statement and invoice. Um, and then um, Tabi Seng, bank statement and invoice. Um, Balesa, bank statement and invoice. Guys, do you agree with everybody? Do you agree with Do you agree with um, with 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 um, bank statement and invoice? Do you agree with it? Rolani, AB, invoice and proof of payment. Yes, guys. Yes, well done on it. Remember that um, when um, when you re yeah, you agree. So when you render, um, so when you render um, a service. So basically, you would have issued the original invoice to the customer, and you will be left with a copy. And also your bank statement will show that money came in into the bank account. So yes, it's true. It's the invoice and the bank statement. So the same uh, transaction, I want you to, 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 to apply the double entry principle uh, uh, rule there. Number one, what are the two accounts? What are the two accounts for transaction number five? What are the two accounts? So I just want to emphasize something here. Please remember when you do it, when you're dealing with when you're dealing with um, creditors, creditors is something that the the is something that the company um, let's see mentioned to me. Uh, let's see. Uh, Prudence is asking, can we say invoice and receipt are they the same thing or are they different? So invoice and receipt are two different things. They're not the same thing, invoice and uh, and receipt. They're not. If now, uh, on this prudence, I'll give you an example. If now, on the same transaction that we're looking at, uh, M. Sakhadi didn't pay this um, prudence, M. Sakhadi didn't pay this by EFT, they paid this by cash. She would have get, gotten a receipt from BS Electrical because they've paid this amount by cash. So they, so BS Electrical would have drafted a receipt saying we received 7,500. So in this case, uh, uh, because they paid, so, so they would have gotten a receipt because uh, EM, BS Electrical paid um, um, pre paid this amount uh, by cash, but in this case, because M. Sahari paid by EFT, uh, she she would have given them proof of payment. So there would have been proof of payment been given by M. Sahari to BS Electrical, and BS Electrical would have given M. Sahari a tax invoice. Um, so BS Electrical would have given a tax invoice to uh, M. Sakhari and M. Sakhari would have given proof of payment. But if this was paid by cash, BS Electrical would have given a receipt to M. Sakhari and also the tax invoice for, for, for the service rendered because they, it's proof that they received the, the, the actual cash. So, so the question is, what are the two accounts?
So before I mention the two accounts, I want you to remember, I want you to put this point across to you guys. Ne? If uh, a, um, BS Electricals buys, buy, um, please also write this one down. Write this one down. Make a note of what I'm saying now. Make a note of it. If a company, let's say for example now, BS Electrical is buying on account, everything bought on account will always affect your creditors, your trade payables. This will be a credit transaction. Anything bought by cash or EFT will be a cash transaction which will affect your bank. I'm going to repeat that. If BS Electrical you um, buys, uh, buys or pays, buys something on account, that is a credit transaction that will affect your creditors or trade payables. If they buy a cash transaction, something or by cash, it will affect your bank account. Cash transaction will always affect your bank. Credit transaction will affect your uh, creditors or trade payables. This is when a company buys, um, buys goods on credit, that's credit transaction. When they buy transaction by cash, will be cash transa transaction affecting your bank. The other scenario, if your uh, customers or clients buy buy or, 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 or buy on or, uh, so so let's say now in the scenario M Sahadi um, uh, bought or the service was rendered on account that will always affect your data your trade receivables if your customers are not paying you by cash they are paying they they take in an account that will always affect your debtors or your trade receivables. If now, in this case, they are paying by EFT, it will always be a cash transaction which will affect your bank. If your customers or your client, you're rendering a service on credit, that will always affect your debtors or your trade receivables. I hope I hope you, you understand what I just said. So in a company, they, they will enter into different terms with, with, with their clients. So it's either they will have a cash customer or a credit customer, whereby a credit is you as a customer agreeing to the terms and condition um, uh, of the company to say that I will be paying this in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. So you, you sort of like entering an agreement with a company that I will be uh, paying this service on account. So when a service is paid on account, that will affect your data or trade receivables. But in this case, it's a cash transaction. There is no nothing on account in this transaction. This is will be what? Bank. So I need you to just uh, uh, understand that point. So the two accounts affected here is bank and income or service rendered or something. So guys, that is correct. The two accounts is what? Is bank and, uh, because this was paid by EFT. So it's bank and um, income or service rendered. So income, uh, uh, um, uh, so this income uh, that came in into BS and electrical. So the, the, the second question uh, for the, Double entry principle would be, uh, do the accounts form part of asset equity or liability? Do, is it an asset? Is it equity? Is it liability? Those those two accounts, everybody's saying asset and equity. Oh, well done, guys. Well done. Well done on this. So the third point, let's look at the third point is, did the asset... Did the asset equity or liability increase or decrease? 
did the asset, the third uh, point is, did the asset equity or liability increase or decrease? Asset and asset. So, so you are saying both increases. Both increase, both increase. Yes, you're correct. Um, bank asset money came into the uh, account in increases. Uh, income is increasing. There's money coming into the business. So, so the income is increasing. The last step is which one of the account must be debited, which one must be credited in the general ledger and the trial balance. Which one of the account, which one of the account, so asset debit and equity credit. Uh, in the trial balance, uh, in the general ledger and the trial balance. That is correct, guys. This um, bank will be debited. Bank will be debited with 7.5 in the general ledger and the trial balance. And income will be credited in the general ledger and the uh, trial balance. The last step that I want us to do here is what, how will this affect the accounting equation? 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 Yeah, well done, guys. Well done. <laughs> well done. Asset bank plus, plus 7,500. Income, income increases equity plus 7,500 and liability will be plus zero. That will uh, balance our accounting equation, guys. That will balance our accounting equation. That will balance the accounting equation. So basically, I'm going to just go overview what we've done. First step, when you are a bookkeeper of a company, source document. You need to look at the source document. What source document am I looking at? Number two, after looking at the source document, apply the double um, entry principle. After applying the double entry principle, you need to record that in your uh, subsidiary books, which we'll, we'll cover uh, 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 in one of the lessons that we'll be conducting. Number two, record that in your subsidiary journal, which is which is um, what a subsidiary journal, your cash book receipts, cash book payment, your general journal. Number three, Record, this will be recorded in the general ledger. Number five, this will be recorded in the trial balance. And the last step always of reporting is your financial statement. Then after the trial balance is done, so basically, um, let's say the financial year end for BS Electrical is December, is the 31st of December, 2021. So the auditors will be auditing Jan to December uh, um, uh, um, uh, figures for BS Electrical. So basically, they would have done uh, the accounting cycle, source documents, subsidiary journals, general ledger trial balance. So at that point, uh, 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 um, the, the company will decide if they will, um, uh, but let's see, Prudence. Prudence is asking a question. So we do double entry before subsidiary tunnels. So basically, double entry is you need to understand what are you recording. What are you recording? Because if you don't understand the double entry principle, how are you going to know that uh, for transaction number one, you're going to debit bank, you're going to debit bank and credit capital. So the accounting cycle is source document, subsidiary journals, uh, general ledger, trial balance, financial statements. The double entry rule 
is being put there that you as an accountant or bookkeeper in that company, you automatically know that. So the double entry rule is not part of the accounting cycle. It's something that you automatically know how to apply that. So basically, I, I'm saying to you, why, when you now the bookkeeper, the accountant, you won't be doing the double entry principle. This is, will be something that you automatically know. So we're doing this double entry rule on this course because most of the people haven't done that in high school. You haven't done that before. But once we, the, the, you understand it fully, this is something that's going to be in you. You, 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 you. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying, Prudence. So the double, so so this will be in you. But the principle, the 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 the, 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 uh, the accounting cycle is source document, next step, subsidiary journal. So for you to be able to apply that accounting cycle when you are a bookkeeper and accountant, you need to know what? Your double entry principle. So for you to be able to, to, to apply those steps, double entry rule principle, you should know a long time ago. You should be able to understand it 100% in you applying. So by you, the accounting, you won't be able to do the accounting cycle if you don't understand the double entry principle. So, so basically, this is how it works. So now you go into the new comp, you, you, uh, you, you go, you go into that a new company, you now the bookkeeper. The, the, the things that you will make you to be able to record transaction is the first step is source documents. The next step is, what do you do? Um, uh, let's see, Leah is asking, would you say income or service rendered when entering information into the journals or general journal or accounting uh, equation? Would you say, you can say income, you can say service rendered, they both form part of income, it's fine. It is fine, even if I don't think you'll get penalized for, for putting that income. So income, service rendered, it's fine. You can you can put that um, um, on your on your uh, general ledger on your uh, but um, general ledger your trial balance. You know you, you you can put that. So so basically now your first step source documents subsidiary journals which will cover general ledger. We will cover later in detail. Trial balance will also cover in detail later. Um, and the next step for for um, companies will be doing financial statements. So basically today I'm just gave you an overview of what we'll be covering um, in this, uh, um, what we'll be covering in this um, um, uh, a study unit. So basically this is what we'll be covering in detail. So the subsidiary journals will be covering it in detail. General ledger will also be covering it in detail. The trial balance will be covering it in detail. So this was just a brief. This was just a brief of uh, uh, the accounting cycle. This was just a brief for you guys so that you can understand the bigger picture of uh, 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 of recording uh, these transactions. So hopefully if I just want questions, is there any questions on what we've done today? any um, uh, problems that we can just clarify. So today was just guys a booster, a booster to keep keep you motivated. Eh? Um, so Leah is saying, um, thank you ma'am session, helpful comment you doing the same thing. When do you, when do you use, um, let me just get a question here. When do you use a credit invoice? When do you use a tax invoice? So Leah, so so Leah, I'm gonna give you just an example. Um, uh, when do you use a credit invoice and when do you use um, a tax invoice? So basically, um, uh, Leah, I'm gonna give you an example. If now you buy um uh something on credit you buy i don't know maybe 
um, you enter into your buy stationery with Waltons on credit. So basically that invoice you owing you yes you got that invoice from Waltons but you are owing money to 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 Waltons. Do you get what I'm saying? So you are owing money to Waltons. You owe money to Waltons. You're getting an invoice, but uh, there's a credit uh, agreement that we went through with Waltons to say that this this I will buy on credit. Um, and the next one of a tax invoice when uh, tax invoice is the same as the last example that I showed here. So a tax invoice, a company will issue um, uh, this transaction number five. So a company will issue a tax invoice to M. Flahadi. Will issue a tax invoice to M. Flahadi saying that they've bought, they've, uh, they've rendered a service um, uh, um, and they paid by EFT. So in, a tax invoice will be issued to um, uh, M. Flahadi by PS Electrical. I'm not sure if that, that is clear. If not, um, so let's see here. Um, let's see. So when you owe money on credit, you receive a credit invoice and cash paid is a tax invoice. Yes, yes, you understand. Yes, yes, Alia, yes. About uh, how is the transaction affected when it says the company uh, is not paid registered? So, lo lo um, Laura, Laurel Michaels, we will cover the VAT. So the, the examples that I showed you now, we didn't take VAT into account. So in the next coming lessons, we'll be also be, I'll be explaining more on VAT. So if let's say BS Electrical was VAT, VAT, was a VAT vendor, so he was VAT registered. So all his invoices that he issues to his clients or customers would have included VAT. So the VAT part, uh, this um, examples I didn't take that into account, but in the coming lessons we will um, definitely be going uh, uh, through that. I'll be explaining more on that. So if it says um, a company is not vet registered, so they're saying they're not a vet vendor. So meaning, um, so uh, uh, SARS wants if a company makes a certain amount on a yearly basis on their invoices, the Fed, the invoices that invoice their clients. If they make a certain amount annually, they need to register for SARS as a Fed vendor. So if they're not making that amount of money that SARS requires, they won't be a Fed vendor. So it so a Fed vendor is somebody who charges Fed on their invoices that they charge to the client. So uh, Laurel, I hope I hope that explains that um, about the folio numbers in the general ledger. Is the order in which um, we set the ledger account a uh, material? So Kahiso, we will be I will be going through the general ledger. I will be going through explaining those folio numbers. So 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 we will be going through the in detail the general ledger, and we will be going through um uh, the folios you know to say that b balance sheet n nominal accounts is income statement uh, balance sheet account is b accounts uh, so b1 b2 n1 n2 so uh, uh, we will be going through um uh, the ledger account in detail uh, uh, in in one of the lessons uh, let's see i'm looking forward to it uh, does the company issue a receipt to the owner for capital? Um, does the company issue a receipt? Uh, so Chanel is asking, does the company issue a receipt um, to the owner um, for capital? So um, uh, Chanel, it will depend, eh? It will depend. Let's say now you, you are now uh, the owner of a, you now, just formed a company. Uh, let's put it on a practical example. You forming a company whereby uh, you buy um, maybe and sell stationery, and then you now have in your account, your personal account, you having fifty thousand in your personal account. 
um, you having 50,000 and you now transferring 50,000 out of your personal account to your business account. You are uh, uh, transferring 50,000 uh, into that. So in that case, can you see that? I don't think a receipt is required because um, the, 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 the source document there would be what the bank statement that you um, uh, transferred money from a personal account to your um, business account. But if now I withdraw 50,000, say the bank that I'm going to withdraw 50,000 out of my personal bank and I'm going to uh, physically go to the uh, the bank account to the bank account and deposit um, this amount into the bank account of um, of the business. I would think maybe at that situation we would issue a receipt to say the bookkeeper will be like, oh, I'm looking at fifty thousand, counting it uh, with the owner that 10,000, 20, 30, 50,000. So the receipt will come will come when you, as the owner of the business, Chanel, giving me, Matilda, as the bookkeeper or accountant, the 50,000 saying, this is my capital contribution. As proof that Matilda Sakhadi has, as you, the, the accountant or bookkeeper, has received this money, a receipt will be issued to you to say that this is a receipt for and then capital contribution. So in that case, the receipt will be issued as proof that you have issued uh, the accountant, uh, Matilda, um, 50,000 cash as a capital contribution to the business. But uh, if it's just a transfer, bank statement is just proof enough that money was transferred as a capital uh, contribution. I hope that answers your question, Chanel. Oh, Leah, that's a pleasure. So when is your next assignment, guys? So so what 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 study units? So, so you're already on lesson on covering four to six. Four to six is business documents, cash transactions. Uh, oh, so it's cash transactions, credit transactions, four to six. Let me just see the next class after this class. Uh, Catherine, am I right? The next class will be what, the 30th, eh? Yes, the, the 30th, or if you if you can maybe, yeah, the 30th, because, because, you, want, because you only want your classes on Saturdays, am I correct? Yes, and also yeah. I think the main thing was for them, if it was possible, it's unfortunate that the assignment is already on Monday. Yeah. You know, it's so unfortunate that the, the 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 assignment is on Monday, and um, uh, the next class then will be the thirtieth. Yeah, will be the thirtieth of April. Then the thirtieth of April, I think, and the next assignment is due on the fourth of May. So on the thirtieth, I think we can speak that we can add another class maybe during the week because the assignment is next one is the fourth of May.